G'day YouTube, welcome back, 1MJ here. So, I thought I'd start today with a cautionary tale in the crypto space, there's plenty of them. But anyway, Harvest Finance, they've put up a $100,000 bounty on an alleged hacker. So Harvest Finance is a yield farming uh, site, uh, and you basically farm this token named... Uh, I think it's called farm actually uh, is is the token that you're after so look I'm not saying this site is not legit but I just uh, yeah I, I'm really concerned about a lot of this yield farming sort of stuff you know people are getting I don't know all these kind of weird kind of named things and you know this one uh, you know I heard about early and I was just like this isn't for me and now again I'm not saying it's a complete you know, joke coin and all the rest of it or site, but it's just, I'm not getting into something that's basically called uh, Harvest and I'm looking for a, a farm coin uh, to be paid in the end. But, you know, they're not a complete and utter scam site. They have put up 100k to try and catch the alleged hacker. So, you know, I suppose that's good of them, but yeah, this is still not my kind of thing. But anyway, if we go down and have a look, so Harvest Finance, a major decentralized finance protocol, has seemingly issued a $100,000 bounty in the aftermath of a $24 million attack targeting its liquidity pools. In an October 26 tweet, Harvest Finance said there is enough data so far to identify the attacker who's well known in the crypto community. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna say he's not that well known, at least, you know, not from uh, an a legit standpoint and an illegitimate standpoint you know he's probably got some hacker name or something uh, I doubt people know his actual real name or otherwise uh, he'd probably be in jail by now but he's basically taken 24 million dollars uh, taken uh, put it into Ren BTC uh, and then he started sending it off and he's done it through I think the curve finance uh, pool and things like that so yeah this is definitely a worry and again why I say you know, just be very careful of what, about what you invest in and particularly all these yield farming sites. I'm not saying that there's no money to be made. Some people have done really, really well, but you know, most people, they're probably in danger of losing a bit of money. Uh, and they've definitely lost money. Like the token dropped 60% in 24 hours, I think. So again, you put in, uh, you know, your coins, whatever it may be, and then you farm uh, the farm token. Uh, and that dropped 60%. So, yeah, you know, what you thought you were getting is obviously worth 60% less right now. So definitely a concern. But, you know, he did return, or she did, or they did, return some of the money. So the attacker subsequently sent back $2.5 million uh, to the deployer in the form of Tether and USDC. And they're distributing that to the people that were affected. So, you know... Maybe not a completely bad person, <laughs> although, you know, they got away with 24 million and, you know, minus 2.5 million. So, all right, they've taken 21 uh, sort of million dollars uh, worth of coins, you know. Not a bad day's work, I suppose. Uh, but look, they have got in contact with, so the Harvest Finance people, they've con got in contact with Ren, where it was going, uh, and also some of the major exchanges, so like Binance, Coinbase, and things like that. Uh, they've identified... Uh, some wallets uh, and obviously with Binance and Coinbase and they've asked them to freeze those funds now at the moment I'm not sure what uh, Coinbase and Binance have exactly done but I suppose that's somewhat good in that that person or people or group or yeah wh whoever won't be able to use those coins if they're frozen but then it means still nobody can use them so if there's Ren BTC and all the rest of it then all of a sudden you know there's Bitcoin and you know stuff that can never be used i suppose or I, again i'm not sure how that works maybe at some stage binance and coinbase will be able to uh, get to those coins or you know maybe uh, they can be reversed the transfers or something i don't know i don't think anything like that is currently able to be done but you know again so if there is these front funds that have been frozen uh it means that they're possibly now sort of stuck there forever so again that means there's even less bitcoin or you know whatever coins were originally uh put in to make it and i know uh 
the REN protocol, REN BTC, you gotta put BTC in to get REN BTC back, uh, as far as I know. Uh, I'm not sure if you can put in other coins like Ethereum and things like that and then turn them into REN BTC. I don't think it works like that. So it, to me, it sounds like that there is now more BTC that is frozen uh, in wallets and I'm not sure if they'll ever be able to be found. I guess that's you know kind of good for the people who are holding BTC because now there's even uh, less again. I'm just not sure what will happen to those funds in the future going on from here. So a bit of a worry and look just be careful again from what I understand uh, Harvest Finance was audited as well so you know that's concerning if they were audited uh, I thought I saw something on Twitter uh, where someone said they had been audited but then you know you have to worry about who's auditing this then uh, if there is a major hack like that can happen uh, concerning either way now I did say yesterday uh, that I was concerned that Bitcoin was going to have a pullback at some stage because we can go over to the fear and greed index and we're getting right into this real bullish territory the the real greed part and generally when we start to lean over here something happens that takes us all the way back to sort of somewhere around here if not even way back to here sometimes that's more you know some kind of pandemic or something for us to get back here but I wouldn't be surprised in the next few days or so if something happens we have a bit of a correction and end up back here but in saying that I don't know if there's going to be any major corrections because I think if there is any kind of pullback it's just going to get bought up now the reason I say that is this Bitcoin's richest are selling so why is uh, the price surging Whales have been selling Bitcoin throughout the weekend from October 22nd onwards. So that was a few days ago, four days ago. Despite the heightened number of sellers in the market, the dominant cryptocurrency has continuously rallied. Now that's because I believe other institutions uh, and big buyers are coming into the market. So I don't think the whales uh, will be able to affect the market the way they would have once upon a time because I think it's so... Uh, hotly contested to buy Bitcoin at the moment that uh, anything that they sell off they're not going to be able to affect the market enough that gets everyone into a panic and then they can buy it back cheaper. Uh, I think they will attempt to for a few times and then I don't think we're going to see any major pullbacks for quite some time. Now I could be completely wrong about that but that is what my gut feeling is. I think we'll still have pullbacks I just don't think there's going to be major ones. I don't see any kind of 20, 30, 40 percent pullbacks happening anytime soon. I think Bitcoin would have to get to around about probably 50, maybe to even 70, $80,000 US before anyone would really be all that keen on selling. I'm not saying no one would sell any Bitcoin at that stage. Obviously miners would. Uh, and you know, people who got in a really long time ago, maybe they bought it for, you know, $1,000 and it suddenly hits $50,000. They're probably pretty happy to take some profits at that stage. But even at that $50,000 mark, I think a lot of it will still be bought up. I think we might start to see some heavy corrections at around about that $50,000 plus thousand mark. But until we get to the $50,000 mark, I don't think we'll see any heavy corrections. Not we won't see any corrections. Still could definitely be, you know, 10, 15, 20% uh, retracements on occasions. But I just don't think we'll see any 30, 40%. Uh, even 50% uh, retracements until way after 50,000. Well, not way after 50,000, until 50,000 and onwards. I think 50,000, there might be some people who are pretty keen to sell and get some profit. But again, I still think that will be brought up pretty, pretty quickly. I don't think people will have too much issue, particularly more the retail than the institutional buyers. Uh, retail will snap that up pretty quickly because it'll be on uh, quite a run at that stage. So... Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see, but I'll continue. In the crypto term, whale refers to a high net worth investor who holds a significant number of Bitcoin. Whales typically have a large influence over the market due to the size of their trades. According to data from the on-chain analysis firm CryptoQuant, whales started depositing Bitcoin uh, to exchanges on October 22nd. Again, so that's sort of, you know, back Thursday, Friday. Now the reason I think Bitcoin hasn't dropped uh, a whole lot is that they're not necessarily sw uh, selling them. I think some uh, would be sales. I think they are starting to get into the altcoins. I think there's a number of exchanges going on there as well. I don't think it's just simply they're you know, selling all their Bitcoin. I am expecting to see altcoins 
start to make uh, some significant moves in the not too distant future. I'm not sure it's going to happen right now, but I think this is going to be another, excuse me, sort of accumulation phase going on because they have come down significantly, particularly, oh, excuse me, struggling with the hiccups. Particularly like the DeFi sector, a lot of the DeFi coins have been coming down substantially and, you know, personal opinion, not financial advice, I don't think DeFi is even close to dead. I think it has still got another massive, massive leg up uh, to come. I think it will run hot right through this entire uh, bull cycle. So yeah, I don't think we're even remotely close to the top. We are just having a good corrective pullback and I think the whales know that and so they are now going to start selling off some of their Bitcoin, some of their Ethereum, you know, take the profits that they've made and start to build positions in those altcoins. So it'll just be the typical cycle, you know, we'll have another big pump and then there'll be a bit of a pullback and then we'll have another big pump and then we'll have another bit of a pullback and this will happen countless times until late next year if not maybe early next year you know it's hard to know exactly when this cycle is going to peak and all the rest of it i think they are getting longer uh, and it will stretch out a little bit i am thinking that it's more going to be uh early 2021 that we hit the uh cycle high but I could be wrong. It could come a whole lot earlier. Again, you know, it's, it's hard to know. I think once Bitcoin gets to around that seventy, eighty thousand dollar mark, I think that is going to be the bare minimum of the uh, cycle high. Look, it could be the cycle high. I'm not really sure. I think it'll likely go higher. I think it could well and truly easy go to a hundred, a hundred and fifty thousand. But look, we'll have to wait and see what happens because there's every chance that it may go even a whole lot higher than that. And there's a lot of people calling for, you know, again, uh, plan B says 288,000. Uh, BitBoy's thinking around 225,000. You know, some people are saying that there could be a million dollar um, Bitcoin, you know, within the next five years. So that wouldn't be this cycle. That would be the next cycle again. So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But obviously, the whales are trying to sell and maybe they haven't been able to affect the market as what they would hope to. You know, usually they could sell off a bit and people would panic and then they would just buy in cheaper. But I think the demand for Bitcoin at the moment is so strong that, yeah, they just won't be able to do it. And they're probably going to have one or two cracks and realize that they can't bring the market down like they used to. And then they're going to go, right, yeah, well, I'm just holding. And then they're going to wait for their target prices, you know, whatever that may be. It may be... 20,000 for them they're waiting to you know sell some or 50,000 or 80,000 or 100,000 150,000 whatever it may be I don't know but I don't think there's going to be any major corrections in Bitcoin for quite some time uh, again I don't think there'll be too many major corrections right up until around about sort of 50,000 don't get me wrong, again, as I said, we will have corrections. I think maybe around that 20,000, uh, we could have a correction. We may hit that $20,000 mark and then sort of pull back to maybe 16,000, something like that. Again, this is just a guess. I don't know this for a fact. Or we could, again, just fly right through 20,000 and really, again, not have any major pullbacks until maybe sort of around the $50,000 mark. But let's go have a look at the uh, market cap. So ever so slowly creeping up, we got 400 billion. Gas prices have really jumped up. So obviously uh, there's some things happening on Ethereum at the moment. This was down at 18 the other day. So, you know, it's almost sort of doubled and a half from there. BTC dominance, again, creeping up slowly, 60.2%. Uh, I do see this going up to around 65 to maybe 75% by the time we hit sort of all time highs, We're around that $20,000 mark, but particularly once we break over 14.8, I think this is going to go up substantially again, somewhere between 65 and maybe even 75%. I'm thinking more 65 to 70% BTC dominance until we hit that $20,000 mark. And then I think it'll start to come back down again. And I think you'll see a ton of money pull back into the altcoins around about then. But we'll have to wait and see. Last but not least, let's have a quick look at our Bitcoin chart and see where we are. So as you can see, we're still creeping up ever so slightly. So now we're sitting around 13,100. So I was thinking that on Monday, we were either going to 
pump right up or fall right down. I think the whales have had a crack at, again, trying to sell over the weekend. We can see these little red ones here, but they just get bought up. So you can see they're getting bought up and they're getting bought up. So it may be that we sort of travel sideways for you know another couple of days before we really start to push up and have a crack at that 13,800. Look, it could be tomorrow, we could sell off again and maybe come back and test this, you know, 12,400, you know, 12,000 sort of $300 level. No one really knows, we're just gonna have to wait and see. But again, I, th I don't see any major pullbacks happening. I think there's too much uh, exuberance at the moment. And again, we can go over to here. This says there's exuberance, so there's people buying cryptocurrency right now, even at this price. If anyone's selling it, there's people who are keen to buy it. And possibly even still institutions, uh, again, following the micro strategy uh, method. Now they're, you know, buying only fractions at a time if they're smart. You know, you wouldn't want to just jump straight in and dump everything in at 13,000, unless you're in it for the long run personal opinion not financial advice in the long run if you bought a whole stack at 13,000 you know four or five years time you know you've probably done really really well for yourself but that you know you just have to be ready and understand that it may be 13,000 today and then all of a sudden a few days later you know we're down at you know 12 and a half thousand and look maybe even down at around you know twelve thousand dollars that is a possibility likely I don't think so but definitely a possibility. So yeah, interesting times. Uh, and yeah, I'm really waiting for this mark to be broken and a proper close above it, not a fake out. If we just break above and then come back, you know, and fall down again here, nothing's really gonna happen. But once this mark gets broken, watch how fast things start to move. There, again, there's, in, there's investors that are still unsure and they think this is gonna be a fake out and that it's gonna get up to here and it's gonna roll over. And so I'll zoom out again. They're waiting for this to be covered off. And once this gets covered off, that's when they're gonna go right. This all time high is going to be broken because this is our second sort of, you know, highest all time high. Look, we had some stuff over here, but it didn't last long, but we broke down, you know, got to the bottom of the bear market and then we started the new bull market. And really, technically, this is where the bull market sort of started, but a lot of people will say it kind of sort of started back here. You know, apples and oranges, depends what you want to call it. But watch Bitcoin move once this gets broken. Now, we may have a fairly hard rejection from Bitcoin at this level. Uh, there may be some people there waiting to take profits, but, you know, I'm really not sure. And if we did, I, I would be surprised if we, you know, hit the kind of the $20,000 mark and then basically came back down to here. We may sort of come more back down to here around the $16,000, $17,000 mark. That's a possibility. But I think things will move very fast and we may just uh, completely smash through $20,000 and quickly start making our way up to, you know, $25,000, $30,000 before we see a correction. Time will tell. All right. Stay safe, be kind to one another, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let me know uh, your thoughts on the market. Do you think we're going to travel sideways or are we just going to pump up and hit this 13,800 really quickly? Hopefully you're on that gain train. Most of us should be. And I'll see you next time.